my advice sucks and my channel sucks and I cannot be trusted. Obviously, I don't feel that way, but I'm making this video in response to a commenter on my channel who had a problem with some of my advice. And I wanna explain because I think there's a lot of confusion when accelerating college degrees. There are two different strategies to do so. And I like one over the other. I like both, but I like one over the other. And I had a commenter who had a problem with this. And I wanna kinda of clarify both strategies for accelerating degrees and tell you why I prefer one over the other. Now, I don't get offended when I get mean YouTube comments. If you have made any YouTube videos at all, you know there are always 99 people that have something really good to say and love the content, and there's always one who just is mean, right? I've had people comment on my eyebrows, and I've had just stupid stuff. Like, people find problems with everything, but it's always that tiny, tiny, small percentage of people, and that's just what happens when you start talking? Some people don't like your voice. Some people don't like you, your eyes. Some people think you look like an idiot. That's okay. But this user had a valid point or this follower had a valid point. There are two strategies and I prefer one over the other. Now, this first strategy, um, the, the kind of more well-known strategy for accelerating college degrees is to go earn a whole bunch of third-party credits through resources like CLEP exams, Sophia.org classes, study.com classes, straighter line classes, and there are a number of others, but essentially they're third party resources who allow you to take college classes or college exams through their service, and then you can transfer those credits over to universities. Now, this commenter that I'm referring to had an issue that I that's not my preferred option. That, in my opinion, should be the backup plan in case there's not my preferred option for your preferred major. And, and let me explain. The other option is there are a lot of universities that have what are called competency-based education programs. And these programs are designed to let you go at your own pace through curriculum. Some schools allow you to just test out of classes and some schools have you do a few assignments and maybe a small exam and then you finish the class that way. The cool thing is you can go through these programs really quickly. I've helped students get through programs like this in like three months for an entire bachelor's degree and it's really cool. Well, my YouTube hater essentially was like, why would you do that? There aren't tons of these programs out there so there are more options using third-party credits, and that is true. My thing here is I if if your major allows you to take like the competency-based approach through a really highly respected university, that would be my primary because you end up in the end with a better degree that's gonna open more doors. If you're studying like a really niche major where that's just not an option, Third-party exams are fine, but let me walk you through the, I guess, pros and cons to both. Now, third-party exams, what a lot of people are doing, it's getting really popular, is they'll try to do like three years of their degree through like third-party services and then transfer them over and do the final year at a university. The thing I don't like about this is universities that allow you to transfer up to three years from third party is they're just not super highly respected schools. They the reputation of these schools essentially is oh they're the they're the most lax schools, the most relaxed schools in the country for transfer credits. Well, when you're looking at like Ivy League schools or high end masters programs, like they don't want to see that. And I'm referring like Excelsior University and Thomas Edison um, UMPI, I actually like UMPI's um, competency-based programs a lot, but if you're like, get three years of transfer credits and then a year through a school like this, and it's a school that's not super well-known, it just doesn't, it's not as high quality of a degree in the end. Now, the second thing I don't like is these third-party credits show up on your transcripts. So, your transcripts are essentially like your report card for your college degree. Well, if your report card or your transcripts say, 
oh, this dude got, or this, this gal got, um, three years worth of the degree through these like kind of random third party sites. Should we take this person or accept this person? Or should we take this person that got their whole degree through a super high respected university? Like it just doesn't look the best. It looks sloppy. Now, having said that, there are still situations where I think that is the best approach because if your major is really unique and you can't earn that major through like an accelerated in-school program, then a, a one to two year degree is better than a five to six year degree because you walk away with a bachelor's degree faster. Now, alternatively, there are schools with what I call or what are called competency-based education programs. Now, these schools include schools like Texas A&M, University of Louisville, University of Wisconsin. Then there are kind of some sleeper schools, um, 100% online school that I really love. It's called Western Governors University. And some people would be like, oh, that's 100% online school. Well, they've gotten students into Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Cornell, Brown, Columbia, University of Pennsylvania. If you're seeing the pattern here, these are all Ivy League schools. And then a cherry on top, not Ivy League, but one of the best schools in the world, MIT. So if you can go accelerate an online degree and then get into an Ivy League school or a top 10 in the world school, that's awesome. And if you can go do that in three or six or nine or 12 months, that's really cool. I mean, other schools, some people frown on these, but I think they're pretty cool. Um, during the pandemic, there were some really high-end universities who went and bought out some online schools. And now they call them their global programs. My two favorite, because not all of them allow you to accelerate, Purdue University Global and University of Massachusetts Global. Those are cool, cool schools. And yes, it's a their global or their online branch, but they're still owned by those universities and they can basically get you a guaranteed acceptance into one of those schools after you get that degree. So Purdue University Global accelerated degree and then almost guaranteed acceptance into Purdue for a master's or a doctorate degree. Like that's really cool. So there are two very different strategies for how to do this. One of the reasons people are like competency-based education programs, I don't like why are you so hot on those? Well, most people don't realize you can get these done really fast. Now, an average person that goes through one of these programs, it's going to graduate in like three and a half years. So all these people that are used to like taking third party exams, they're like, man, these are way faster. That's not the truth. When you, my strategy is like, if you get accepted into one of these really good competency-based education programs, you then hack the degree from inside the school. So you don't do what the school's telling you to do. You learn what you need to learn and you test out of classes and you accelerate. And like I said, I've helped people do this in as little as three months. I did this in nine months while refining my strategies and working a full-time job and having a family to support like in my free time. So it can go really, really fast and can open doors for like, even Ivy League schools down the road, or I've seen students go through these programs and get really, really high level jobs, like running entire hospital chains and like really, really cool jobs. So not to say if you go the other route, you're not going to get a cool job because that's not true. Like there's so many cool jobs that are earned without even having a degree at all or a degree from a community college or any school. So don't get me wrong. I like both strategies. I think accelerating a bachelor's degree is absolutely amazing. It's one of the coolest things you can do and one of the biggest things you can do to change your career. But I lean one way over the other because just as fast, if not faster, and you walk away with a more respected degree and clean transcripts in the end. Now, the flaw to these competency-based programs is there aren't as many schools to choose from and there aren't as many majors to choose from. So there are some majors where it's just not going to be possible. And then you go with my plan B, which is like third party exams, transferring them into one of those schools. Here's the thing though. What people don't realize 
Yes, most universities accept CLEP exams and most universities accept third-party credits, but most universities accept a very small amount of those. If you're trying to get like three years worth of your degree through third parties, there are only a, there are a very small handful of schools that are actually going to accept that many of those. So you're refined there with that strategy as well. And in my opinion, they're not as good of schools. Their reputation is we're the most relaxed schools in the entire country with transfer credits. Well, a lot of big name schools, if you're going for a master's degree or a PhD or a doctorate program, like a lot of schools don't like that. So I want to be in a situation where my degree is going to open any door that I want in the future. And it can be faster when it's done through the school because an another con with these getting a bunch of third parties and then transferring them over, you then have to do your final year of school through that university. And oftentimes that can't be accelerated. So a lot of times these third party credit transfer strategy people are, you're looking at like a year and a half, two years for a degree when this other path, you can three, six, nine, 12 months. So yeah, now here's the thing. I have a lot of respect for any other YouTube channel who's teaching accelerated college approaches and things like that. Um, a lot of people that talk about it haven't done it themselves. Some have. Um, so be careful with that. Um, but yeah, there, there are different strategies to do this. There's not just one way to do this. And my opinion is I prefer one way over the other, but I don't hate the other. I just think one path is cleaner and opens more doors down the road. So if you're looking at like, I just want a bachelor's degree and I want to study whatever class I want. I want, I want to go take a bowling class or some random class and I want it to count towards my accelerated degree. Maybe third parties work great for you because you can be a little bit more lazy with what you study and things like that. And you can kind of do it on your own and you don't have to work with the school as much. But when you're working with the schools, it can be even faster anyway. So I, I don't understand the hate like on one over the other. I, I definitely respect both approaches. But if you follow my channel and you wonder why like, okay, there's this other channel who's saying, go take a bunch of CLEP exams or Sophia.org exams. And then this dude is saying like accelerated degree through universities, both can be done. And I've helped a lot of people with both. I just like, if it's a degree or a major where either path will work, I prefer going the cleaner path. It usually is faster. And with scholarships and grants, it tends to be cheaper because you don't have to pay for those third parties. And maybe there, some people will say no, because these third parties are cheap. Well, scholarships and grants make actual college free if you're willing to put in the work to do that. So you can actually get your whole degree without paying anything. So respect both ways, but that's why I lean towards competency-based programs over kind of the patchwork degree through the third parties. If that, if the third party approach works better for you, I still help people do that. And it's still respectable. I just prefer going through respected universities and giving myself the opportunity. Like if I want to go to an Ivy league school down the road, I can because I got a degree that will open those doors. So I hope this makes sense. If you've liked this video or found it interesting, I actually have a video where I teach my three step process for accelerating the degree. And I get deeper into like, how do you actually hack or accelerate within the, the universities and not do it their way. I'll leave a link down below the video. I call it my degree hacking tutorial. So you can go watch that and see if accelerated degrees is going to be possible for you. If it's going to be a good fit. And if you can save multiple years of college, hope this video has added value to your day. I will talk to you in the next video.